I want to spend also a little time talking about corn, um, uh, you know, especially as African oil owns 45% of corn. Uh, it's a, it's a, still a significant investment for us. So as uh, you may recall, we drilled two wells right next to each other, Shabil 1 and Shabil 2. Both of them had oil shows in every one of the uh, forest zones. But once again, we know we've got uh, reservoir, we know we've got source rocks. Uh, we actually have very good seals, big thick and, and hydrites and, and shales and limestones. So all the components are there except we think the traps fail. So we, uh, we have, um, we have up for the next phase of this. So we, we renewed the licenses for three years. We can hold these licenses till January of 2016. Uh, some of you may be watching the, the Somalia political situation. Uh, they have a cent they have established a new central government. They have a new elected president. They've been recognized by the UK, the US, and Canada. Um, there's actually a, a British ambassador in Mogadishu for the first time in 20 years. Uh, Al Shabaab seems to be pretty much a thing of the past. So they've come a very long way uh, in the last year. They still have a ways to come. And some of the items, the issues now are: what are they going to do about petroleum licenses? So. Both Somaliland and Puntland have been insistent that they're going to administer their own natural resources, and that's a precondition for them joining the Federation of Somalia. Um, the Somalian government uh, hasn't necessarily uh, uh, endorsed that yet, so I think we're going to sit back and wait a little bit and see what happens politically before we start spending any more money. But once again, we are quite encouraged. We want to shoot some more seismic in Darur. We want to drill another well in the Jao. We still think there's a lot of prospectivity here. Um, the other thing about corn is we have told our investors that we're not going to do any more new ventures in Africa. I think the people that have put money in recently want us spending that money um, in the, the core areas of uh, uh, the Pella. Um, so, but we have, we are seeing some interesting new ventures in East Africa. So we are going to be looking at to put if we find any, we're looking to put them in corn patrol. So corn we see is a you know, potentially growing in uh, Africa oil too. Um, we're focusing really on the western part of the tertiary rift, sort of in southern Africa, but we're looking at several opportunities. So if we do find something of interest, uh, it will be in horn. We've only got about $7 million in the bank left, so that's enough to see us through, and uh, not even enough to see us through the seismic, but we, can, we, we don't need to raise money in the short term. So what we're hoping to do is find a, a nice, sexy new venture to put in there, and we can go raise some money in the market to finance that. Again, we quite like Somalia. Uh, we've got very good relations with the government. I think we've uh, you know, spent a fair amount of money there. We've spent more than anyone else in the world in Somalia in the last uh, five years. So I think we've, we've gained ourselves a bit of credibility there. And we've done it uh, with good support from the local community and good support from the government. So this is why we're all here. I mean, we're, this is a table that shows our, our resources and the numbers here are, are, are almost obscenely large. Uh, when I first saw these, I was a bit stunned that uh, this Gaffney Klein, our reserve auditor, is, is, is known as a fairly conservative bunch. And uh, when I first saw this 28 billion barrels of prospective resources, uh, I was even a bit surprised myself. But when you do the math yeah, and look at the area, we've got 130 prospects and leads that we've identified now. Um, and we've only drilled three of them. So these numbers are, are big, but they're not outrageous. So the, uh, um, uh, the goal that we have this year is basically to try to take these prospective resources, which 28 billion of them gross, 10.7 billion net. But if you notice on the risk side, they're still only giving us about a 10% chance of success. So um, that's come up in uh, 10 BB and 13 P where we've actually found oil. But if you look at blocks like 10 BA, uh, look at blocks like South Omo, it's less than 10%. This is about 8% chance of success, and this is about 7% chance of success. So we, we still are looking at the um, um, you know, fairly high risks that our reserve auditors give us. But we can cure that pretty easily by drilling one discovery well. So when we drilled in the Mokachar Basin, Gamia had a 14% chance of success, as did all the other projects in the basin. As soon as we made the Gamia discovery, our reserve auditors increased that to 35 to 39% chance of success in all the prospects in the basin. So you can see with the numbers here, uh, if we're able to do that in the uh, in the Bokacha, in the uh, Turkana Basin, we can move quite a bit of reserves over into the uh, uh, into the risk category. And more importantly,
importantly than that, the drilling, particularly in the Lokachar Basin, is going to move a lot of risk reserves into the 2C or 2P category. So eventually, the value of our company, while we may get some credit for risk exploration reserves, the hard value of the company is going to be proven and probable reserves. Uh, and proven and probable reserves with a, with a line of sight to a development plan. So that's our real goal over the next two years, is to try to move as much as this we can this way and into a, a new column over here, which will have this intrinsic resource for PP reserves. And I think we've got a good chance to do that with our, with our drilling program. As I said, not every one of these blocks is probably going to work, but I think there's a, a good chance uh, more than half of them will, uh, or uh, 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 that some of them will work. So, um, again, I, uh, this is my ninth day of my roadshow. I would say every single person that I meet asks me this question first. How much money do you have, and when are you going to have to raise more? I, I kind of thought we wouldn't have that question now that we got $250 million in the bank, but uh, people, people are very focused on this issue. I must say that because we're in the London group, I'm maybe not quite as concerned uh, of this. Uh, I can always go to Uncle Lucas and ask him for more, for more money if we need to, but uh, um, frankly, we, we, as I said, we had $400 million offered to us in this last placement. They only took $232 million. So I think there's there's money out there for big projects. Uh, we saw the <coughs> Ophir raised uh, seven hundred million dollars this week uh, for offshore Tanzania. So I think uh, if the projects are good, I think there's still capital to be had. So I must say I'm not that worried about uh, the, the future funding, especially because I don't even have to think about it uh, for another year. But uh, uh, again, we've got a strong uh, uh, a strong uh, uh, financial position. Uh, we've got a very aggressive budget this year. Uh, our gross budget is $468 million. Uh, our net of that is $184 million. So we are getting a fairly nice uplift because of, particularly because of our ferry by Marathon Oil. So they're paying our way in, in three blocks. Uh, so we actually get a, a pretty good leverage on the budget. So a lot, of more, a lot more spending for our, our net interest than uh, what we have to pay. I'm also happy that our budget is really going into the ground. So 68% of our budget is drilling, 18% is seismic, and only 14% is basically other expenses, the biggest of which is fellow uh, operating costs and fellow DNA. So uh, I'm also happy that we're really focused our money and our, uh, focus our expenditures in our, in our big money blocks. So the four blocks, 10PA, 10DB, 13P, and Salomo, 84% our budget uh, will be going into those blocks. Uh, we have added a little bit of staff. Uh, many of you know I, I moved to Nairobi in September. We've hired a new chief operating officer with uh, leadership uh, in Calgary, uh, bringing some expertise we really didn't have. So I think we're, uh, um, we're still a very lean company. Uh, I'll give you a, a good example. Our COO uh, had to take a two-thirds cut in his salary to join us. Uh, we hired him from a big uh, uh, high-paying company to a uh, 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 you know, we, we tend to be very lean in our salaries, so um, it tells you something that a guy's willing to take a two-thirds salary cut because he believes in the, uh, the upside potential of our company. So uh, again, I think we've got a, a, a good team of people that we've, been, that we've worked with for a long time, but we are a very lean group of people. Uh, we believe in low salaries and, and good option package. When the shareholders make money, we make money. When the shareholders don't make money, uh, we, have bar we have barely enough to survive on. So, Fair capital, again, very clean, 250 million shares outstanding now, 8.3 million options, no warrants, no debt. And we plan to do that uh, uh, for the foreseeable future. Uh, we don't look, we don't, we're not looking to take any convertible, strange type of uh, debt instrument to warrant instrument or take any uh, pure debt. So you've all seen this slide before. This is our bragging slide where we, we tell you that uh, you're, you, you almost have to make money if you're, if you're, if you're, if you're joining the London group. Um, uh, you know, we've had a, a good run with the, the companies we've got here. Um, I think Tammy and Dr. were two companies that I started. We, we sold them off for almost $3 billion from a $17 million market cap start. Went from $0.50 cents a share up to $16.31.50, respectively. Uh, London Pro Petroleum, I think, still is our best uh, um, company that we've done in the group to date. Um, you know, Ashley and Alex and Ian uh, Mundine have Take a company from $100 million uh, to, um, you add these two together, $8.5 billion. And they've done that with only $50 million of equity base. So I think it's, uh, it's, it's, 
it's all through internal growth and through exploration and finding a big oil field to go on a spare trip uh, didn't hurt. Uh, we've got two more companies that I'm involved in uh, that I started. Uh, um, again, I think they're both good companies. They both have challenges right now. Black Pearl is heavy oil in Western Canada. Uh, I think we sold oil last week at $41 a well head when the WTI is 110. Or not WTI, Brent is 110. Uh, the big problem with the heavy oil in Western Canada now is pipelines. So we need the Keystone pipeline or the Gateway pipeline to unlock the value of that crude. But the fields themselves are very good. The management team is probably the best I've ever worked with, John Festival and the boys. So I think this is a this this is going to be a good company. Uh, it's just got to wait till uh, heavy oil value is unlocked in Western Canada. Chamaran again uh, when we started. Um, uh, in Kurdistan, um, the two issues we've had is politics and geology. When we started Shamran, we thought the geology was given, that you could basically walk out in any field and drill a well and find a million barrel oil field. Um, we actually found the geology was much more tough than we thought. Uh, the good news is we found one nice oil field called Latrouche, which we're currently developing, uh, and we're waiting for the politics to develop. So the politics does seem to be improving. I think Kurdistan, uh, Kurdistan has won against uh, southern Iraq. Uh, it's just a question of uh, finishing that up and getting the politics in order. Again, a good management team, a good asset. Um, just needs some external politics to uh, to uh, um, move forward. But I think my point here is, you know, we've taken these companies from 173 million to 21 billion. If you if you look at the companies we've sold, other than these. Uh, we've actually created about $31 billion worth of uh, value in the Lundin Group over the last 15 years. Our average share price increase is 32 times. <coughs> Lucas is telling me I, I've, I've made seven times our money. He says, if I, if I stop at that, I'll be one of the slackers in the group. <laughs> he says, I've got, I've got quite a ways to go to, to measure up to the, to the rest of these companies. So um, I think it's a very possible thing to do. Um, having been involved in every one of these, I can say that Africa Oil is, is the best risk reward ratio of any stock that I've seen in the group. Uh, it is early days. There still is a lot more risk. There's, there's political risk. There's uh, um, uh, technical risk. There's execution risk. But the upside here is, is I think, unparalleled in any of the uh, funding groups on companies that I've seen. So uh, talk a little bit about CSR. Again, this is a, a big topic of ours. Uh, you see it, you see the lending name in the press uh, a lot. I'm not always favorably mentioned in this, but this is something I, I also think we do quite well. You know, I've been 16 years now with the lending group, uh, almost all of it in Africa, and uh, um, I think we, uh, we, we, we set the standard on, on most of these uh, issues, uh, and we have done for some time. So we do work in difficult environments, but uh, how we find the work there is really working and engaging with the local communities. So now that I've moved to Nairobi, I'm spending most of my time working with the government, working with NGOs, working with the communities, trying to make sure that uh, this is this is a blessing, not a curse. Because oil and resources in Africa is not always a blessing. Uh, I can say that having them is a blessing, but people can turn them into a curse. So I'm actually very optimistic in Kenya that they're doing the right things. Everything they say and what they're going down the path um, seems to be heading the right direction. Uh, some of you are aware there's an election this week. Um, this is probably the best looking election so far. They've had no, little or no pre-election violence uh, for the election. Uh, I actually watched the first presidential debate ever in Kenya two weeks ago. It was three and a half hours long, uh, but it was actually very